Hi, I'm Andrew. Today we're diving into Jet Engine's REST API integration. First, I'll quickly explain what REST API is. Then we'll build two real-world examples, sending form data from one side to another and pulling data back to display it live. By the end, you'll know how to connect websites, share data, and create dynamic REST API listings with Jet Engine. Before we jump into Jet Engine, let's quickly cover what REST API is. API stands for Application Programming Interface, a way for two systems to communicate. The client, such as a website or app, sends requests. The server, such as another site or service, processes them and sends back responses. REST API is the most common API format on the web. It is stateless. Each request carries everything it needs so the server doesn't store session data. This makes it simple, faster and easy to scale across many servers. REST APIs use four core HTTP methods, the foundation of all requests. GET retrieves specific data from the server. POST send data to the server to create a new item, for example a blog post, a user account or a product. PUT send data to the server to update or replace an existing record. Delete remove data from the server. In WordPress, the REST API works through special URLs called endpoints, places where you can send a request and get specific data back. By default, you get endpoints for posts, pages, and taxonomies, but adding your own usually means writing PHP code. Jet Engine makes it point and click so you can create and extend endpoints without touching code. Let's start with a simple but super useful example, collecting form submissions on one site and sending them directly to another site's database. Imagine you have a central site where you store all event participants, and an event site or multiple sites which are landing pages for different locations or events where people register. When someone registers on the event site, their data will be sent to the central site automatically through the REST API. On the central site, we're going to start by creating a custom content type called participants. This will be the database table where all our event registrations are stored. I'll add three meta fields for participants info, name, email and photo. And I'll give them simple clear names. These names matter because they'll need to match the field names in our form later so the data lines up correctly. For the photo field, I'll use the media field type with its value format set to media URL. This is important because the data will be sent through REST as JSON. We're not actually uploading attachments to the central site's media library, just passing the images URL as text. That's why the photo field must store a media URL. Even if the image itself isn't visible in the CCT backend, its URL will let us display it on the front end using dynamic widgets or blocks. And while we're here, let's make this incoming data easier to work with in the backend. For each meta field, I'll enable the showing admin columns toggle. This way, the name, email, and even the photo URL will appear right in the CCT admin list without having to open each record individually. Next, in the CCT general settings, we'll turn on register create item REST API endpoint. This generates a special URL, an endpoint, that can accept new entries from outside. Now let's talk about authorizing REST API connections. By default, the access capability is set to edit post. This means the endpoint will only accept data from request authenticated as a WordPress user whose role has that capability, like admins, editors or authors. If we leave the access capability field empty, the default edit post value still applies. If we type public instead, then anyone can send data, no login required. That might sound convenient, but it's risky, because anyone who knows how to find your endpoint, which can be done without access to the admin dashboard, could spam your database. So I recommend keeping it restricted unless you really need it public. Let's see how to set up proper authorization. On the central side, go to the profile of a user who has the edit post capability. In my case, that's the admin account. 
scroll down to application passwords, give your password a label and click add new application password. This creates a password that your form will use to prove it's allowed to send data. Now let's move over to the events site. We'll create a form in JetForm Builder with fields matching the CCT field names from the central site. The labels can be anything, but the field names must match exactly. In post submit actions, add a REST API request. In the REST API URL field, paste the endpoint URL we got from the central site CCT. We'll leave the custom body field empty, so all form data is sent automatically. Next, enable authorization and choose application password. In the credentials field, enter the central site username and the application password you just created, separated by a colon. That's it, form setup complete. Now place the form on your event site page using Elementor's JetForm widget, a Gutenberg block, Briggs JetForm element or just a short code. Style it how you like, hit publish and test it. When someone fills out this form, their data travels securely through the REST API straight into the participant CCT on the central site. And as you can see, our test submissions appear instantly as new entries. And as I previously mentioned, you can certainly display it on the site's front end. By the way, if the REST API intro and this first example were helpful, give this video a like so we know you're enjoying it and we'll keep making more tutorials like this. In the last example, we used a POST request to send form submissions from one site to the central site and store them there. This time we're switching to a GET request, instead of sending data in, we'll pull it out. Our central site collects participants from different promo sites. Now we'll display that full list on a separate participants site. First on the central site, I'll open the participants custom content type and switch on register get items item rest api endpoint that tells wordpress it's okay to share this data if someone requests it we get two links one for a single item and one for the full list and for this demo we'll copy the list url quick check any rest api endpoint returns json you can read in a browser i'll paste this item list url into address bar and here's the JSON. It's human readable, so I can confirm the fields I expect, name, email and photo are actually coming through. Now let's move to the participants site, the one where we'll actually display the list. Go to Jet Engine's list of modules and with the REST API listings module enabled, click on REST API endpoints. Hit the button to create a new endpoint, give it a name and paste in the full list URL we just copied. For the items path setting, Jet Engine needs to know where the API's JSON code will look for the actual list of items. In our case, the participant's CCT returns items right at the top level of the response, so we can leave this field empty. Jet Engine will automatically find them. You'd only need to fill this if the data is nested inside other objects. For example, if you get an API from a partner, it might include extra metadata or descriptions and your actual items could be grouped inside a specific section. In that case, you'd type the name of the section here so Jet Engine knows exactly where to look. The authorization for this REST API endpoint works exactly the same as in the previous example, so I will not use it this time. Now the important step is to hit send request. This doesn't just check the connection, it also grabs a sample item so Jet Engine knows the data structure for our listing later. If you skip this, the data will not be retrieved. And keep this in mind, if you ever change anything in the CCT on the central site, like renaming a meta field, changing its type or adding a new one, you'll want to come back here, open the endpoint and hit send request again. That way the participant site will fetch the updated structure and you'll see the right data when editing your listing template. Right now, if everything is ok with the endpoint URL, we should see the green success message and after that we can save the changes.
Now we need to tell Jet Engine how to display each participant. I'll create a listing template, choose REST API endpoint as the source and select the endpoint we just added. This is the design that will be repeated for every entry in the listing grid. In Elementor, for any textual content, I'll use dynamic field widget and in Gutenberg and Bricks, it could be any other block or element that allow dynamic data as Jet Engine is fully compatible with them. Let's begin with the name. I'll drag in a dynamic field widget. The source must stay on post term user object data. Don't change it. Then in the object field dropdown, scroll down until you see the section for your REST API endpoint. Inside that list, pick the field you just set up for participant's name in your CCT. Same way, display the participant's email data. For a photo, use a dynamic image widget. And in the source, directly choose the photo field from the endpoint list. Although we set that CCT fields value format to media URL earlier, in the listing editor, Jet Engine will display the actual image. Once all your fields are placed, style the template to match your site. Fonts, colors, spacing, borders, whatever you like. If you want to take this listing to the next level, you can add filters so visitors can search or sort participants in real time by the same values we're using here or by any other data. We've got another video that walks you through making data imported through REST API work with filters. Now it's time to bring everything to the front end. On the page where you want the participants displayed, drop in a listing grid widget or block if you're in Gutenberg. Select the listing you just built, adjust the grid layout and styling and hit publish. From this point on, the process is completely automated. When someone fills out the form on the event site, their data is sent to the central site and the participant site pulls it in via REST API and displays it in the listing, live and without any manual updates. And that's it. With Jet Engine's REST API integration, the possibilities are huge, from multi-site event listings to centralized product catalogs. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit like, subscribe for more Jet Engine deep dives, and let us know in the comments how you'd use REST API in your own projects. Thanks for watching. Take care.